welcome to Louisville, Kentucky. Game four of this series between the Louisville Cardinals and the seventh ranked Florida State Seminoles. Florida State with a 2-1 lead in the series so far. And much on the line, really, for both of these teams. Florida State coming in, top team in the ACC, trying to stay there with Clemson hot on their heels. And for the Louisville Cardinals, in eighth place coming into today, want to make sure they stay in that top 10. On the call, I'm Jen Hildreth, along with NFCA Executive Director Carol Bruggeman. Carol, we just saw Florida State run rule Louisville, a 9 nothing win in our first game, but... You have reason to believe Louisville can still come in here feeling pretty confident, especially with a lot on the line. Well, Florida State earned their victories with a solid team performance, but Louisville has proven they can bounce back quickly as they got it done in the second game of the series. They did. They bounced back, got the win there. And here's how things went in our first game earlier today. Elizabeth Mason with the solo shot for the Seminoles to get the running and the scoring started in the second. And then Florida State really came up with a couple of big two-out hits. Lots of extra base hits as well as Sydney Sherrill shows her power. It was Florida State up 4-0 after the second inning. And there was more scoring to be had by Florida State in the fourth inning. The bottom of their lineup, 7-8-9, gets it done. Three consecutive singles. Landers with another single. This one with two outs. It was all Florida State as they win the game 9 to nothing. So the Seminoles coming through with plenty of fireworks in our first game of the doubleheader today. This is going to finish out the series. It is the final home series of the season for Louisville. First pitch to Kirsten Landers was a strike, and you know that Taylor Roby certainly helps up that confidence level for the Louisville Cardinals as their only win in this series came with her in the circle oh, on so Friday. so impressive. She really shut down the Florida State offense. Just one hit, only three strikeouts, really controlled and pitched to contact. We'll see if she can cool off a red hot Kirsten Landers, who was so good in the game earlier today, went two for three, four RBI, also came around to score a run. Landers gets it right into the glove of Carmen Greenwood. Well, Taylor Roby is the leader in the circle for the Louisville Cardinals. You're gonna see her work all four parts of the zone. Her ball has a little bit of drop tail on it, so really likes to work a little more of the lower half of the zone, an exceptional defender on the infield as well. Sydney Sherrill, the batter for the Seminoles. ACC all-time leader in doubles. We've seen her crank those out Consistently in this series, she had one earlier today for her only hit of the game. Well, we've seen this Florida State offense score runs often up and down the lineup in games one and three of this series. The difference was Taylor Roby in game two just really shut down Florida State, and they love to run the bases. They love to steal bases. They're very aggressive on the bases, and the best way to combat that is to keep them off the bases, keep mixing speeds. <laughs> Roby did that well and strikes out Cheryl. Florida State 0 for 2 so far against Roby. Here is the Louisville defense. This is how the game finished in the infield with Ornelas at third, Servi at short. That's how our earlier game finished, I should say. Rebecca Chung going back behind the plate. A little concern for her as we saw on Friday. She seemed to have injured her hand in an at-bat, but she is back there for the Cardinals. Kaylee Harding hits it hard. Seminoles have hit number one, and that is all they were able to manufacture off of Roby. 
first time around this series, just one hit. Well, just a good, solid hit there by Harding. It's an inside pitch, but she keeps her hands inside. That allows her barrel to connect with the ball. Doesn't try to lift the ball, do too much with it. Just takes the single. Senior catcher Anna Shellnut now up at the plate. All ACC second team selection for the Seminoles in 2019. Last time those postseason awards able to be handed out as we had no postseason in the shortened 2020 season a year ago. Shellnut to right, Butler's underneath it, and that'll do it for the top half of the first. The day started with a bit of an emotional side for Louisville, honoring seven seniors before the game. We'll honor them as well after the break. The ACC's Committee for Racial and Social Justice in conjunction with its member institutions have identified April 18th through the 25th as ACC Unity Week. A lot more going on today in Louisville as well. Senior Day honoring seven seniors before game one. Had a chance to get some hugs and some socially distanced time with their families who could not come on the field. Look at Celine Funky, what a leader and tremendous player she has been for Louisville throughout her career. There you see some of that senior love in the stands at Ulmer Stadium. And you have to think Carol pretty much hit the refresh button, right? Fresh start for the Cardinals in this second game of the doubleheader today. Here is their starting lineup. You've got one of the best hitters in the ACC leading off and Carmen Greenwood, Roby as well, swings the bat really well. A couple other changes a little down further in the lineup, Cassidy, Greenwood and Chung getting in there as well as Ornelas. So a few changes, but regulars even so in this lineup throughout the season for Louisville. Well, you're absolutely right. That reset button, huge. You don't have time to celebrate the wins and you don't have time to kind of sulk in the loss. You got to get back up, get on the field, hit that restart button. And you have to go right back up against Katherine Sandercock, who got the start in the first game today, and she was so good. She's coming back for another. She also got the start in game one of this series. Two wins so far for Sandra Cog. Well, and she should be feeling very fresh. Did not throw a complete game in the five inning game, but just 36 pitches is all she threw and, and was in complete command and complete control. No surprise they're coming back with Sandra Cog for the second game today. So it's up to Louisville to try to figure out how to hit her. They've not been able to do it yet, Carol. Anjan so effective today, mainly down in the zone. You're going to see her with a drop ball changeup combination. Feeds that defense that's number one in the ACC so far this season. But every now and then she likes to work that upper part of the zone, as you saw with the strike out there. Maddie Newman, the batter. Senior from Osceola, Indiana. Started every game of her career at Louisville since her freshman year. She had 35 starts that year. Newman puts it in play over to third. The throw from Cheryl is high, though. It pulls Mason off the bag, and so Newman aboard. Well, this ball is in the air a long time after it bounces off the infield. So Cheryl knows she's got to get rid of it. 
and rushes her throw. It goes high. And this is what speed can do for you. It gets you out of your element and your routine kind of rhythm. Roby could be two for Florida State. How's that for erasing a play you might not have liked so well? Florida State number one in the league in double plays. She makes it look easy. Florida State Seminoles sitting atop the ACC standings, trying to stay there, hang on to claim the regular season championship yet again. This is what they have left after the series at Louisville. They'll host NC State and then finish out on the road at Pitt. 17 times the Seminoles have been ACC champs and still the team to beat. No score, top of the second, and Cassidy Davis, the DP for the Seminoles. Just struggled, still hitless in this series. And Coach Alameda showing a lot of faith in Davis in the designated player position. She has tremendous power and just having a tough time getting on track in Louisville. Waited on the pitch from Roby, but pops it over. And the out is made. Newman getting out number one. That brings up Elizabeth Mason. Started her day with a home run in game one of the doubleheader today. Her sixth home run of the season. Senior out of Tampa, Florida. You know, just this program, as you mentioned earlier, just the dominance that they've had. It's one thing to kind of climb the mountain, try to win that first championship, try to move up within your respective conference and standings, but it's quite another thing when you're the target and you're at the top of the mountain. And every single year, Florida State is mentioned as one of the top teams in the ACC, one of the top teams in the nation, and yet they find a way to perform. And they get many contributions up and down their lineup. This is the aforementioned home run from Elizabeth Mason. Senior out of Tampa, Florida. And Florida State, Carol, we've talked about this throughout the series, not, I don't think you would label them as a home run hitting team, except for their last series against Syracuse, where they knocked 13 of them out of the park. But for the most part, it's just a part of what they do offensively. Well, you're absolutely right. And every year, your personnel presents what type of, of team you're going to have offensively. And this particular season, Florida State has been all about manufacturing runs, being a strong base running team, they take the extra base, they hit and run a lot, they bunt and run a lot, they use the squeeze, they steal bases, number one in the league in terms of stolen bases, and then they pitch and play defense well, but it is a team that manufactures runs. And, and a lot of times, you know, just not only the home runs, just not as many extra base hits as you typically see from a Florida State team. Yet they're able to put up over five runs a game throughout the season. And that's a credit to their short game and their ability to steal bases. Eighth pitch of the at bat is hit back to Roby, who will make the play for out number two. Taylor Roby, redshirt junior out of Mount Washington, Kentucky. Excellent hitter in the lineup for the Cardinals and best pitcher this season as well. 
Just such good location on the ball. She does not give in to the middle of the plate often. Of course, no pitcher ever wants to go there. It's like the red zone, but Roby really fights those corners, fights to find those corners. She works both sides of the plate, both in and out. Mixes in a little bit of off speed. She doesn't have a lot of strikeouts on the season, but finds a way by hitting her spots, throwing with good velocity to control the hitters. Devin Flaherty, redshirt freshman out of Sarasota, Florida. Perfect three for three in game two. Not going to have a perfect outing in this game, however, as the strikeout ends the inning. Taylor Roby in control in the circle. It's time for Louisville to generate some offense. Late in the regular season, so we're showing you the portion of the ACC standings you really want to hone on, especially if you are a Louisville fan, because the top 10 teams in the ACC will make it to the ACC tournament, which will be right here at Ulmer Stadium in Louisville. So the Cardinals trying to fight to stay in that tight group there in the top 10. They'll go on the road for the remaining two ACC series after this one is completed at Boston College and then at North Carolina. And then hope to be back in business on their home field for the ACC tournament. We'll, of course, have every pitch of that tournament for you on ACC Network or ESPN2. Michaela Hurst didn't get a chance to play in the first game today. Making up for lost time. Lead-off single to start the inning for Louisville. First, regular starting baseman for Louisville. It was Madison Siasio who started at first on senior day, and Siasio was senior in game one. And it looks like Hurst will make way for a pinch runner. And Jenna Servi, who started the game in the flex position. Michaela Hurst started the game as the DP, then entered first base to play defense. But Servi now in that flex position coming in to run for Michaela Hurst. And that will set up Charlie Butler at the plate. The right fielder out of Randleman, North Carolina. Butler had a hit in each of the first two games of the series for Louisville. Only one opportunity, though, 0 for 1. And she could not continue that hitting streak going in the first game of our doubleheader earlier today. Oh, and you see Louisville going to the short game here. Yeah. Haven't scored a run yet today. Shut out in the first game of this doubleheader today and just trying to do everything they can to get more runners into scoring position. Butler does indeed try the bunt and she is out but Servi advances to second. It's been a busy day around the ACC in softball. Notre Dame sweeping the series against Virginia Tech. Duke with a sweep over North Carolina and Clemson coming back in the bottom of the seventh to beat NC State. That series continuing with game four coming up, but the Tigers, how about the way Clemson's playing right now? Carol now won 16 straight. Oh, just when you're on a winning streak like that, you find ways to win and your team believes and is confident that they can win no matter what. A big win for Clemson in the come from behind victory. First pitch to Rebecca Chung, a strike. Chung, junior from Torrance, California. Hits it to the shortstop, Muffley. 
Two out now. And we were wondering about Rebecca Chung because of this on Friday, Carol. We saw her take a pitch really close in on her hands and that seemed to bother her. She wound up leaving the game. Yeah, swung at a pitch up and tight. Dropped the bat immediately. We did not see her the rest of the day on Friday. Good to see her back in the lineup today. Now one of those key clutch players for the Cardinals. She'll take a seat now, however, make way for Cassidy Greenwood, younger sister of Carmen Greenwood. Cassidy started game two behind the plate, it was over two with a walk. Sandra Cock readying in the circle. Servi on second. We have seen Louisville be aggressive when given the opportunity in this series. Well, and they had so much fight after, after losing in game one of this series. Pretty handedly, they came right back and found a way to earn the victory. And as we mentioned earlier, Louisville fighting for a spot in the ACC tournament, have to stay in the top 10 of the regular season standings to do that. Three one pitch coming. And going, but right to Cheryl at third. So a leadoff hit spoiled in the inning. Nothing doing for Louisville, still no score. Can you hear that? Touchdown, Clemson! 67 yards, Trevor Lawrence. Next chapter. NFL Draft begins Thursday on ESPN and ABC. Everybody looking ahead to the next stage, the next phase in the careers of all those collegiate players you've enjoyed watching. And according to Mel Kuyper, there you see the top three projected picks from the ACC led by what everyone thinks will be an absolute lock for Jacksonville. Trevor Lawrence going as the number one overall pick, the Clemson Tigers quarterback. So plenty of excitement looking forward. And then also looking at all the different sports going on right now. Josie Muffley retired for out number one. Good series going on between Florida State and Louisville. The seventh ranked Seminoles leading the Cardinals to wins in the first three games. But this pitcher right here, Taylor Roby, has been the one the Seminoles could not figure out. She got Louisville the win in game two. Trying to do so here and get the series split. Well, and a win would go a long way for the Louisville Cardinals. Not only with their confidence as they face the rest of the season, but also in the ACC regular season standings. They'd love nothing more to not only make the ACC tournament at home, but to improve their seeding which makes such a big difference when you get into postseason play. Yeah, not to mention confidence too, right, Carol? I mean, this has been a consistent theme we've talked about. We talked about it with Holly April before the series started, just about, you know, her team, she was hoping would feel encouraged by the fact that they've played such a challenging schedule. A lot of ranked opponents, but they have not gotten all the results they wanted. They've already gotten one win over Florida State, and boy, it would certainly be big for them to get two. Uh, just the amount of ranked teams they've played. And 
you know, it's, it's nothing new. Turn the page and it's a new day and it's another ranked team for Louisville. So they, they understand what it takes. It's just a matter of being able to execute in the moment, with the timely hitting, solid defense. Kirsten Landers, they talked about needing solid defense with a runner on, issued the first walk of the day. We didn't even have one in the first game today. Here's what happens with Landers. Well, Servi gets caught coming up. That ball did not have a lot of pace on it. She really need to stay down on the ball. But with the speed of Florida State, you're always feeling rushed with Ornelas there at third base. You're feeling rushed. And uh, that's the little peak of the head. So two on now for the Seminoles. One out, Sydney Sherrill the batter. Uh, this has been a challenge for Louisville. They almost almost every game they're switching their left side of the infield between shortstop, third base, catcher. We saw three different catchers start in the first three games of the series. And when you get this late in the season, that can be a challenge. You got Jenna Serviet short today, Ornalis at third base. But it was a different combination in game two, and they're just trying to find that combination that's going to give them some solid defense day in and day out. Yeah, finding that right mix, right, of what they're going to get defensively and then also offensively at the plate where they've been searching for a little more production around Roby and Greenwood, who've by far been their best with the bat. Three one count to Cheryl. Make that three two and a strikeout. Try to get the runner going to third, but the aggressive play of Florida State continues. The aggressive base running, I should say, continues as Morgan advances. And this is what Florida State does with a full count on Sydney Sherrill. She rarely strikes out, but look at Rebecca Chung. She's doing the fist bump of the strikeout while she's doing that. Florida State steals two bases. Got to be on your toes, right? No time for fist pumps. And the Seminoles have been excellent with runners in scoring position in this series. Prior to that at bat by Cheryl, they were 10 for 23, including five for nine in game one today. Kaylee Harding, the batter. Freshman right fielder for Florida State. Pops it up. Chung trying to get there. Couldn't quite get her glove to the ball. Well, and you look back at the end of every game, you can find a couple plays that make a difference. Chung hustles over quite a bit of room at the backstop, but can't. That's a tough play when you're running toward the backstop. You got the net. And uh, just, just a challenging play there. A good hustle by Chung. And, and you look back at a game and you say, okay, what are the two or three plays that really made a difference? Because you can usually break it down to that. And I feel like, Jen, we're in that part of the game right now. Florida State. Got a couple base runners with a walk in the air. Got Harding up to bat here. This is where that timely hitting comes in for Florida State. Can they come up with a two out RBI? Can they make something happen? Or can Roby do what she did during game two to Florida State more times than not, which was shut down the offense and the inning? Florida State just one for 22 against Roby in game two.
Full count now to Harding. Hits it. But that is going to end the inning. Hot corner was ready for it that time. Big hugs for Ornelas as the Cardinals do indeed escape and we stay scoreless. Well, defense wins you ball games. Those reactions from Ornelas. No score in Louisville. It's the NCAA Softball Selection Show. Gets a shot to go to Oklahoma City. You gotta win or they're going home. That does it. Back to the Women's College World Series. Feeling pretty confident right now. When we reveal the bracket for the NCAA Tournament. I'm king of the mountain. There is nothing like the postseason, and we know you all missed it last year. We did too, so take a good look at those dates you want to mark on your calendar starting with that selection show, May 16th. And we are expecting some news from the NCAA too next week, Carol, as it relates to the NCAA tournament. Ah, uh, the NCAA Championships Committee will be announcing 20 potential NCAA regional host sites. They will pick the final 16 from those 20 sites this week. Funky is retired. Yeah, doing things a little bit differently this year, as most things have been in the COVID-19 pandemic. But we will know, at least of those 20, that's where 16 sites will come from on that selection Sunday when the show is announced and the field is announced. And those 20 sites give the committee a little flexibility. You know, we're still three weeks away at least from Selection Sunday. So when you're that far away from Selection Sunday, it's a little tough to, you know, a lot can happen in the last three weeks of the season in terms of the top 16 seeds. And, and so uh, the committee giving themselves a little breathing room there and having 20 potential sites be named. Alana, Alana, excuse me, Ornelas, the sophomore of LaGrange, Kentucky, the batter. Back at third base, she's been a part of that rotation you talked about on the left side of the infield for Louisville. Had the big hugs after getting the Cardinals out of the top half of this inning. Now every pitcher has a little different style and you try to hide the ball, but this one's very unique from Sandercock. Is that just part of her rhythm? And her focus, getting the ball up near her eye level, and then goes into her rhythm and her motion. One, two pitch, a bit inside. Ornelas cannot connect. Second strikeout of the day for Sandercock. Just pitching with such precision right now. Finds the hitter's weakness. It's up and in here as Ornelas goes right underneath the ball. And just hitting her spots, moving the ball through all four parts of the zone. Top of the order, Carmen Greenwood at the plate for Louisville. Former Auburn Tiger was in Auburn 2017 through 19. 2020, her first year joining her sister Cassidy with the Cardinals. No oh, two count. Another strikeout to end the inning. Great work by Sandercock in the circle. Nothing doing there for Louisville at the plate. So after three, we're still scoreless. Sam. Well, no runs on the board in this game. The reason why, 
Catherine Sandercock for Florida State as she is firing on all cylinders, working all parts of the zone. And on Louisville side, it's Taylor Roby doing a lot of the same thing, holding the Florida State hitters at bay. Toughest when she needs to be, when runners get in scoring position. We've got a good old fashioned pitcher's duel going here in game four of this series. Just three total hits allowed by Sandercock and Roby so far in this Game four of the series between these two teams. They split a doubleheader on Friday. Florida State winning the first game. Louisville coming back to win the second with Roby in the circle. Seminoles also won first game of this doubleheader earlier today in run rule fashion. Sandercock picking up the win there with, what was it, Carol, 36 pitches that she threw in that game. And back to start game four. And a shell nut, the batter for the Seminoles, diving Ornelas at third, but it is foul. And the way that Roby works those corners, you've seen a lot of balls from the right-handed batters really turning on them. Some real shots down the third baseline, first baseline. Roby does not give in to that middle third of the plate, just continues to paint the corners, showing great focus, great command. Not a lot of movement on her ball, but good location, good velocity. Roby was named the ACC Player of the Week in February. Had a good game, both pitching and hitting. Good series, I should say, against Virginia. Shellnut waited on it, pops it, and the basket catch made by Hurst. Saying, no problem, Taylor, I got it. Uh, what pitchers like Sander Cock for Florida State, Roby for Louisville can do to an offensive lineup is, is start to get frustrated you know you, you don't you see your teammates struggling to make good contact and your first couple at bats may have not been what you wanted them to be and you've really got to win the battle between the ears in a game like this because it it may take one solid inning from your team to put together some back-to-back -back hits Cassidy Davis the batter popped up in her first at bat Designated player and a little bit of a funk in this series. Hitless coming in. Crowd like that pitch. But our home plate umpire, Scott Mayer, did not. Called it a ball. Davis up the middle, and that's good for a hit. There she goes, gets on the board. Just mentioned hadn't had a hit in the series, and a big smile for her first one. Uh, when your role is to be the designated player and hit the ball, when you finally get one in this series, that's a huge sigh of relief for Cassidy Davis as she continues to battle and gets her first hit. And she'll be replaced. Kaylee Mudge coming on to pinch run. Elizabeth Mason, senior out of Tampa, the batter. And this is where Florida State likes to put runners in motion, hit and run, run and hit. Short game, just trying to force the defense to have some moving parts. Force them to make a choice. Do I feel the ball? Do I get to the base and defend the runner? 
If I move too early, I might open up a gap for the hitter. It's what Florida State's been doing all season long, keeping the infield guessing, keeping them moving. One, two pitch. Evens the count, two and two. And if you wonder why Florida State leagues the league in walks, look at this discipline slash nerve from Elizabeth Mason to look at that pitch. It was very close, just inside. Roby missing outside, and then the ball just got away from Chung, but everybody stays put. Well, that still it, at that's first. A, that's a live ball, you know, with Chung throwing it back to the pitcher. Got a little caught up there, not really sure what was going on, but she throws it right to Ornelas. But that is a live ball, and if that would have skipped away or gotten away, then Mudge certainly could have advanced. That injury we showed you to Chung's hand, by the way, was her catching hand, not her throwing hand. Mason pops it up. Hurst over to make the catch for the second out of the inning. Uh, every time Roby has gotten into a little bit of trouble in this game, which hasn't been often, but it seems like she just elevates her game a little bit and finds a way out of the inning. Here, here we find Florida State again with a runner on base and two outs. And so far, Roby's been able to shut the door. She got Devin Flaherty to strike out to end the second inning. And gets the freshman chasing, goes behind 0-2. And it's that late movement on the ball with Roby. It's kind of a tail. It doesn't have a ton of spin on the ball. Doesn't get a, a lot of swings and misses, but when she does get swings and misses, it's that little tail on the ball, a little drop. What's really helped her as well is her ability to throw the off speed on, on more counts than she did earlier in her career. Flaherty making some contact over to Ornelas at third and the Cardinals once again escape any trouble. Get out of the inning, zero still on the scoreboard. The ACC's Committee for Racial and Social Justice in conjunction with its member institutions have identified April 18th through the 25th as ACC Unity Week. Great initiative across the conference. Look at this difference, Carol, between the total pitches thrown with Florida State and Louisville so far. Well, Sander Cox just so efficient now. That, that includes a half inning more for Taylor Roby, but it's still just a drastic difference as Sander Cox has gotten ahead early in the count, stayed ahead. Limited the base runners for Louisville. I believe Louisville only has two base runners in this game so far. So just an efficient outing for Catherine Sandercock. Maddie Newman will lead off the bottom of the fourth for the Cardinals. Newman, one of the seven seniors honored for Louisville on their senior day. Appreciate all the uh, extra marketing effort, <laughs> getting the seniors their due.
Oh, she's been a bright spot this weekend for, for Louisville. She's found ways on base. Got a chance to share this day with her family. Cardinals getting this done well before game one of the doubleheader today. Get the family members an opportunity to share in this moment because it's an accomplishment for them too. Newman to Muffley, out number one. Taylor Roby, see if she can help her own cause at the plate. Get into a double play to end the first inning. Well, if there's one player on this Louisville team who can change the scoreboard with one swing, it is Taylor Roby. As you mentioned, she truly does it all for her team, a consistent, a mainstay in the lineup just performs at a high level day after day. And that's all you can ask for as a coach is just what you can count on from a player every day. Roby hits it out to center. Morgan mishandles it. So Roby stands up comfortably with the double. Well, we'll see exactly how it's ruled. She stands up comfortably on second, I'll say. Absolutely ropes this ball right back up the middle. And Morgan tries to field it on the run. That ball's got a lot of pace on it, a lot of heat on it. You're the last line of defense in the outfield. And when that ball skips away, Roby ends up on second base. <laughs> Looks like she's ready for an equipment change or pinch runner or some sort of change. It will be a pinch runner as Miller comes on. Vanessa Miller, Miller now will be at second. And we can't call it a double for Roby. Do have one change defensively for Florida State in the outfield. Mudge had come on to pinch run and now she stays in left field. That's where Kirsten Landers had been. And remember, Mudge went in for Cassidy Davis to pinch run, so she was in the DP slot. They simply entered Mudge as the DP to play left field. And right now, that would make Landers the DP. So those the adjustments to keep an eye on for Florida State. Seminoles having a little chat as it's a 2-0 count to Michaela Hurst. Hurst in her first year with the Cardinals. Spent the last two seasons at Utah. She's from St. Louis, Missouri. And she singled in the second. Do have some action in the Florida State bullpen as well. Kaylin Arnold up and getting warm in case they opt to make a change. Ball bounces away from Shelna, but she recovers. Stares down Miller there at second. Dares her to try to make a move. Oh, just so quick behind the plate. Leads with her glove. Watch her lead with her glove. Gets it turned over and bare hands the ball. Just no wasted time from Shellnot. An absolute wall and bare hands it, ready to make the throw if necessary. 3-1 to Hurst. She misses. Full count now. And Louisville 
in the series, just three for 16 with runners in scoring position. Full count, Hurst to Flaherty at second. So she is out, but Miller over to third. So Miller, 60 feet away from giving the Cardinals a lead in this game. Charlie Butler, the batter, two outs. Just get that feeling. It would go such a long way for the psyche of Louisville today if they can get on the board in this game. Be the first to score. Butler will not be able to help the Cardinals cause this time around. She hits it right over to Mason at first. And that will do it for inning number four. we talk about Kayla Kowalik enough at all. I don't even think if we've talked about her, how far can you go with a one-headed monster? They gave every other team hope that they can beat Oklahoma. Too many benevolent balls, too many walks. If you're intimidated, you're done. You're Amanda, crushed. if you strike me out once, you're not gonna do it again. <laughs> a lot of fun, a lot of great information and conversation on the Seven Innings podcast. Here's what the ladies were talking about this week. Carol, anything piques your interest? Oh, I don't think there's any question. The whole softball world was talking about the Georgia upset of number one Oklahoma in game one of their doubleheader. Oklahoma came back to win game two, but Georgia made a huge statement in that game. No doubt, everyone wondering, would anyone be able to beat Oklahoma? The Sooners undefeated on the season prior to that loss. Josie Muffley, the shortstop for the Seminoles, leading off the inning. This is the longest in this series so far that we've gone scoreless. Florida State winning game one, 10 to nothing. Louisville bouncing back to win game two, five to one, both of those on Friday. Muffley ropes this into the outfield. She's looking for two, she'll get there, no problem. Lead off double for Josie Muffley as the Seminoles won game three, which was game one of this doubleheader earlier today, nine nothing in five. Just been so impressed with the bottom of the order for Florida State. They have come up big in this series. And Muffley with the lead off double, putting a runner into scoring position with nobody out here in the fifth for Florida State. Yeah, in particular, you mentioned that bottom of the order, the seven through nine hitters in our first game earlier today went six for nine and scored five runs. That was Flaherty, Muffley, and the batter here, Danny Morgan, who's going to try to bump, but puts it right into the glove of Roby, who says, why is nobody at second? Because they could have gotten Muffley out as well. And this has been very uncharacteristic of Florida State, not able to put the ball on the ground in a bunt situation. There's no need there for Morgan to try to turn this into a, a bunt for hit, but she drops her barrel. And the, and the middle infielders are going to cover the bag. There's nobody at second base. Landers in that leadoff spot. Quickly retired for the second out. And boy, both of these pitchers today work at such a quick tempo. If you blink or look away, it's, the ball's on the way. And, and uh, usually it's been a strike. They've been very efficient around the strike zone. And all of a sudden, it's a quick two outs for Louisville. Roby's been very good against Sydney Sherrill in this game. Two strikeouts for Sherrill. 
two of the three that Roby has recorded in the game. And that's not easy to do because Sydney Sherrill just does not have a lot of strikeouts coming into this, into today, just 12. But two, as you mentioned, in her first two at-bats in this game. Yeah, uncharacteristic for the two-time All-American. Two-time All-ACC first team pick as well. Saw some great defensive plays out of Cheryl, too, in our first game earlier today. She'd just been solid, really, throughout the series, but added a little sprinkles on top with some finesse in the earlier game of the doubleheader. Watches that pitch. The crowd wanting to hear that third strike called. I think Roby put a little extra velo velocity on this pitch. That is an exceptional pitch on the corner. Very close. There's a full count, winds up giving the free pass to Cheryl. Meanwhile, Muffley's at third, so runners on the corners. And if you take your eye off Florida State for a second, they never relax on the bases. And Muffley takes third. Holly April out to talk to her team on the how exactly they want to be prepared for this situation. You know, Carol, you've talked about it a lot, that you just have to be ready, you have to be thinking ahead, right, as to what Florida State could be trying to do. Well, with runners at the corners, Knowing what Florida State likes to do, it's, there's, it's just a matter of time before Cheryl goes in motion, tries to steal a base, and, and Coach Holly April knows that and wants to make sure that her team is on the same page. Are we going to run a first and third play on defense? Are we going to throw the ball down? This is a 0-0 ball game. Or are we going to fire it? And Coach Ashley Lane former great player at the University of Michigan going out to have a conversation as well. Looks like we're going to have a, a catching change for the Cardinals. Well, it's one of the themes we talked about, some of the changing positions for Louisville on their infield and behind the plate. And Greenwood, Cassidy Greenwood is already in the lineup. She's just entering now to play defense. And that would make Chung now the, the DP. Cassidy Greenwood, younger sister of Carmen, as you said, had been in the lineup. So now she will just slide behind the plate where she started game two of this series. So she does have some experience there against this Florida State team. Gives a thumbs up. She's ready to go, ready for the situation. Kaylee Harding trying to make something of this opportunity for Florida State. Such a critical point in the game. I feel like we've had a couple of those, but that's what you'll get when it's 0-0. Neither team has been able to capitalize so far. 
Ah, you're absolutely right, Jen. Which team is going to come up with that timely hit? Right now, Florida State has the opportunity to take the lead. Let's just add to the drama a little bit. Full count now. Roby's been painting the corners all day long. This time, it's the outside part of the plate. Just a pretty pitch. Harding makes foul tip. How'd you like to be behind the backstop? Whoa, you think the ball's coming right at you. Yeah. It's a little natural reaction there. He's smiling, smiling under that mask. You can tell by his eyes. What a strikeout for Roby. Again, the Cardinals escape. Keeping Florida State off the scoreboard. Big strikeout from the pitcher to keep the hope alive for the Louisville Cardinals in this series finale. Want to keep an eye on the RPI. This is what the top 10 looks like in the country right now. A little different in some ways than the teams you see in the top 10 rankings wise. Yeah, and this is one of the tools that the championships committee will use when they make the selections on Selection Sunday. But a lot of the RPI has to do with your strength of schedule and your opponent's strength of schedule. And that's why you see Oklahoma down a little bit. I tell you what else has been very different this year than in years past. Without a lot of preseason tournaments, non-conference tournaments, teams didn't play out of conference as much as they normally do. And that can affect the RPI. Rebecca Chung still batting in that designated player position. She got replaced behind the plate at catcher by Greenwood, but kept her same spot in the lineup. But it's a quick at bat, one out. Cassidy Greenwood now. Ground out to the third baseman in her first at bat. I think what else has been so impressive about Katherine Sandercock today is just her ability, even when, you know, not a lot of strikeouts today, just, just three strikeouts. But the, the way the ball comes off the bat, just not a lot of hard hit balls. And that's because she's moving the ball through the zone. Her ball's got a lot of late break to it. She's mixing speeds. And so it's tough for the hitters to get a ball squared up or barreled up. Two wins already in this series for Sandra Cock, Florida State. Always seems to have a little bit of movement somewhere. Ball flip, little smile on her face. Full count now for Greenwood. Swing and a miss. Sander Cox hits her down. Oh, you're right. She has this happy-go-lucky attitude and then just zips it right by for the strikeout. Coming inside and tight for Greenwood. Just very balanced in her motion. No wasted motion. Another strikeout for Sander Cox. Funky hits it to Muffley, and she's quick. We saw her beat out a throw earlier today, but not so this time. Muffley makes the play. Still scoreless after five. The pitchers have been on point today. Katherine Sandercock in the circle for Florida State, controlling the Louisville offense. 
And we've seen a lot of the same from Taylor Roby at Louisville, thrown a few more pitches throughout this game, but the result is the same. A shutout going, controlling the Florida State lineup, shutting down any opportunities of scoring and firing up her team with her performance. Pitchers dominating the storyline so far in this final game four of the series. The Cardinals trying to salvage a split. Seminoles trying to take the series win. Shellnut over to Ornelas at third for the first out. Prior to Friday, when Florida State lost in game two to Louisville, the Seminoles had not lost in series play in the ACC. They lost two to Virginia Tech in pod play earlier in the year. But since then, it was four straight series sweeps coming into this weekend's series at Louisville. And Lonnie Alameda saying they always play us tough, Louisville. They're scrappy. They're gritty. We know we're going to get a good fight, and they have. Cassidy Davis, Newman, two down. And there's always that one team on your schedule over the years that just always presents a little, little thorn in your side, so to speak, no matter what. And we've seen that a little bit in Louisville with Florida State's team, just really having to work, having to fight. And Louisville coming out on top. Cardinals took the series the last time these two teams met in 2019. Snapped a 52 series unbeaten streak in ACC play for the Seminoles when they did that. And they did it in dramatic fashion in the final game as well. I know you were on the call for it, Carol. How many runs were scored in the final inning of that one? I mean, only nine innings nine? in the seventh inning. Uh, only, <laughs> nine. excuse me, only nine runs in the seventh inning. I'm still yes. a little tongue-tied about it. It was, uh, <laughs> it was very exciting. Florida State scored six in the top of the seventh to take the lead, and Florida, or excuse me, uh, Louisville with the walk-off to win it in the bottom of the seventh. Different kind of story this time around. Certainly, we've got the four-game series and. Now, neither team able to capitalize when they've had some runners in scoring position. Both 0 for 9 in that situation in the game. Roby continues to paint the corner. She has not given in. So tough to hit. Mason stays patient. Florida State leading the ACC in walks. Mason takes a free pass. Well, even when Roby has missed, it's not been by much. Mm -mm. Remember the top of the ball. Top of the knees, excuse me. Flaherty in the air, off the glove as Servi came over trying to make the catch. Exactly where she caught this. Well, this is, remember, it's where the ball is. It has nothing to do with the fielder. It's where the ball is. And Servi gets caught drifting. Mm. That is a very close to being a fair ball. But you always want to be faster than the ball when the ball's in the air. And that drifting caused some issues for Servi. Devin Flaherty, the batter. Was a perfect three for three in the first game today. 0 for two so far in this game. Flaherty to third. Ornelas has to hurry. Got it there just in time. So the Louisville Cardinals, we're going to head to the bottom of the six and see what the Cardinals have to say at the plate. Ornelas making the play. Keep the Seminoles. Well, we talked about the last time these two teams met in 2019. This was how that series in Louisville would end. Sydney Sherrill 
had a grand slam, top of the seventh, but Carol, you were on the call for this. It wasn't over yet. Well, down two runs coming into the bottom of the seventh with two outs. Rebecca Chung with the walk off, bases clearing double to give Louisville the win in the game and the win in the series. Big moment there, not just in that series, season, in that series, but really for Louisville as a program. New pitcher now for Florida State is Kaylin Arnold. We saw her warming up earlier, so the Seminoles opting to make the change. Does this surprise you at all, Carol, as well as Sander Cock had been pitching? Well, Florida State's been pitching by committee all season long. Kaylin Arnold has not pitched so far today, so you got a fresh arm in the circle. Sander Cox had a role in both games today. You can tell us a little bit about Kaylin Arnold, the former Tennessee volunteer and SEC freshman of the year. What we can expect from her? A different look than Sander Cox. Really going to work the upper part of the zone. And she has a lot of spin on the ball and works up in the zone with some velocity. So you're going to see some strikeouts. She's on her game. We did see Arnold in game two on Friday. This is her 20th appearance this season. Get a look at what she has done. Yeah, and throws the ball hard. Good velocity. Look at that strikeout to walk ratio. 99 strikeouts, just 17 walks on the season. Really pounds the zone. And that game two start where she did take the loss. 3.2 innings pitched. Gave up six hits, two runs. Did have five strikeouts. And gets another strikeout here of Ornelas, the nine hole hitter for Louisville. That will turn us over to the top of the order for the cards. And that's what you're gonna see, that low rise ball, good late jump on the ball. Both the speed and the movement get Ornelas swinging. And you have to figure the time to make a move for Louisville with your bat is right now, Florida State well aware of it. The majority of the production this season as is normally the case, but certainly for this Louisville team at the top of the lineup with Carmen Greenwood leading the way, one of the best hitters in the ACC. Carmen Greenwood was the star in game two. This is how she led off the game, an opposite field home run, making a statement early for Louisville did that against Arnold. This time a bit of a different look. Snuck a bunt in. Showed off her power. Now shows off all the skills she has. Well, you have the chance to see a true triple threat with her ability to get on base with the short game. Look how she deadens that ball. All four fielders have to try and move to get to the ball. And when they're trying to move to get to the ball, that's a base hit for Carmen Greenwood. Greenwood leads the Cardinals, one of their top base stealers as well. Maddie Newman singled in the first. Well, Florida State has now shifted with Newman, the slapper up, and Greenwood speed at first. Look how tight both Muffley and Cheryl are playing on the third base side. That allows Flaherty to cover the steal, and you're going to see Arnold work the outside part of the plate. Ball goes right back to Arnold. She goes to second to get the lead runner. So Greenwood is out, but Newman is on. Boy, when you have a pitcher who can field as well as Arnold, no hesitation, turns her hips all the way around towards second base, fires a perfect strike for the lead out. No hesitation when you have a true kind of fifth infielder there in the circle, really helps the defense. 
And that was the second out. My apologies had the strikeout for Ornelas as out number one. So two outs now and Taylor Roby, the batter for Louisville, doubled back in the fourth inning. Taylor Roby, home run leader for the Louisville Cardinals. Ranks near the top of the ACC with 12 home runs on the season. But was at an 0-2 count and Kaylin Arnold did not miss. Two strikeouts for Arnold as she comes into the circle trying to give her Seminoles a chance to take the lead. Kaylin Arnold comes in, does her job, gets one of the best hitters in the league Swinging, we're still tied at zero. This socially distanced crowd in Ulmer Stadium trying to get everybody fired up as we are getting late in the game. Neither team, Carroll, has been able to capitalize the few opportunities that they've had in this game offensively. It has been a dominant game for the pitchers. For both teams, the defense, a lot of goose eggs up there. A lot of opportunities for teams to get some runners in. But so far, neither team has been able to capitalize on those runners on base. And you just get the feeling in a game like this, which team is going to blink first? Which team's going to get it done? Give you an understanding of where Florida State is in the lineup. So. This is Josie Muffley. She is the eight hole hitter. So we've got eight, nine, one on the way for Florida State. Muffley at first. And at first, Hurst had a little difficulty handling it, so just makes the tag. And Muffley is out. Oh, Muffley just trying to do anything she can to get on base. She probably would have been out of the runner's lane anyway on that, but Hurst is able to make the tag. The 7-8-9 hitter is so good for Florida State in the first game of this doubleheader today. Danny Morgan a part of that. She has walked in this game. Got all the way around the third. That's as close as the Seminoles would come. Morgan, one of five players in this Florida State lineup. Remember that 2018 national championship team and showing some cool steel. No nerves for Morgan here as she is aboard. We talked about it earlier. This is a hitter trending upward in the right direction for Florida State. This excelling in conference play. Her numbers continue to rise offensively. And that nine batter, that nine spot in the order, the more they can get on base, the better opportunities your team has for run production as we turn the lineup over here for Florida State. Kirsten Landers, leadoff hitter, has been one of the best for the Seminoles throughout this series. 0 for 3 in this game, but 2 for 3 with 4 RBI in the first game today. She's just had really a solid series so far for Florida State. This one, this single scored two runs, showing you she can go the opposite way as well. Very productive in that leadoff spot. This ball popped into the grass and now Florida State really threatening the Cardinals. Back-to-back -back hits by Morgan and Landers. Those rally caps working. Well, and this is the fourth time through the lineup for the Florida State offense. So they have seen a lot of pitches from Taylor Roby. And they have battled, and here comes Florida State. Sydney Sherrill, couple of strikeouts, a walk. Oh. 
And a big opportunity for Florida State here in the top of the seventh. Seventh ranked team in the country. Top ranked team in terms of ACC standings. Cheryl frustrated with herself at that pop up. The runners no chance of advancing. Two outs. Uh, she knows that was an opportunity lost. But Taylor Roby has dialed in against Sydney Cheryl today. She does have the one walk, but 0 for 3. And that one was a very big out for Taylor Roby with a runner in scoring position. Remember, there was the change behind the plate for Louisville, too. Cassidy Greenwood now back there catching. Kaylee Harding, the batter for Florida State. One for three today. And that pitch count getting up there, too, for Roby Carroll. Through 133 pitches against Georgia Tech April 9th. At 124 now, but it's a strike. Well, she is extremely durable in the circle. But as that pitch count rises, well, they're, they're still putting a lot of faith, a lot of trust in Taylor Roby, and why not? I would too. She's been able to perform. And she gets the strikeout looking to end the inning once again. Florida State, runner in scoring position, no runs on the board. Well, the scoreboard will show you we're pretty even. 0-0 zero, zero runs, 5-4 hits in favor of Florida State, but certainly the Louisville pitcher in Taylor Roby has had to work a lot more for it on her end than the Florida State pitchers have in terms of pitches thrown. Well, a lot of different ways to get to the same result, but you are absolutely right. Catherine Sandercock, who started the game, now has turned it over in the circle to Kaylin Arnold. Been a very efficient outing for Florida State to have the zero on the scoreboard so far for Louisville. And Taylor Roby's had to work a little more. Florida leaving Florida State leaving nine runners on base, but able to step up when needed. So bottom of the seventh, Michaela Hurst, the cleanup hitter for the Cardinals, puts it in the air. On the run is Mudge out in left. Fair ball and Hurst. Good way to start off the inning for the Cards. Swinging aggressively, gets underneath this ball, but it's got some eyes. You can see Mudge hustling over. That ball is just fair. And decision time for Coach Holly April as Michaela Hurst has already come out of the game one time to be run for by the flex in Jenna Servi. So if she does come out of the game, she would be done for the day. Well, we'll see exactly what Coach April opts to do. It looks like she is indeed going to give her team the best shot on the bases, and she feels like that is with Servi in running for Hurst. So Servi on first. And umpiring crew just making sure they're all on the same page. Carol Bruggeman keeping you all informed as to exactly what's going on. Thank you for that, Carol. So first, job well done. And what an opportunity now for Charlie Butler. Junior outfielder. No outs, serving on first. Butler looking to bunt. She'll take it, had a sacrifice bunt in the second, does so here, moves Servi over to second.
do have a little bit of action in the Florida State bullpen. It is Emma Wilson. See her come on in relief in both game one and game three for the Seminoles. And we told you about that 2019 series, the walk-off hit to win the game, win the series for Louisville. And the bottom of the seventh was from none other than Rebecca Chung, who's at the plate now. Good looking pitch from Arnold. Louisville's turn for the rally caps. Can Chung come through in the clutch as she's done so many times in her career? Cardinals had a midweek series at Kentucky, top of the seventh. Chung had a hit to put her team ahead. Wildcats would eventually come back to win that game in extra innings. One, two. It is up. Not catchable, though, for Shellnut. You're absolutely right, Jen. Some players have that innate ability to just rise to the occasion. They're able to calm themselves enough to stay focused and stay relaxed and really zone in, but also understand what's at stake and are able to perform. And Chung has been able to do that for Louisville throughout her career. Good patience watching that pitch come in. This is painted on the corner by Arnold. Not really sure where that missed, but it is a very close pitch. Two, two, Chung battling. The junior from Torrance, California, hitless in this series. No time like the present. but she's going to have to figure out Kaylin Arnold. Seventh pitch of this at bat on the way. Full count. Three, two, Chung hits it over to third. Cheryl hesitates for a moment. They've got the runner stuck and do eventually tag Survey. This ball is hit hard. What a play by Sydney Cheryl and catches Survey. Survey should have seen that ball through the infield. And look at Sydney Sherrill. We've seen some great defensive plays by her at the hot corner today. None bigger than this one to take Servi out. You talk a lot, Carol, about the infielders in particular just needing to be on their toes, thinking ahead. And excellent job of just that and execution from Sherrill. ACC yes. Defensive Player of the Year in 2019. Cassidy Greenwood, now the batter. Down toward the bottom of the Louisville lineup. She's hitting in the seventh spot.
Does Louisville have what it takes here to find a way, end this game in seven, or will we see extras? Another full count. What else would there be in the bottom of the seventh with no score? A little more drama for you in Cassidy Greenwood. We'll see how she handles the full count. Got her to strike out. Kaylin Arnold and the Seminoles not done playing yet. Well, Sydney Sherrill takes this game to extra innings by playing a little defense. We're headed to the eighth. Pitching and defense, the name of the game so far in this scoreless series finale between seventh ranked Florida State and Louisville. The Seminoles lead the series 2-1. But boy, Taylor Roby has been working hard for Louisville in the circle in this one. 125 innings, <coughs> excuse me, 125 pitches so far in this game as we head into extra innings. And this is what all that off season conditioning, all of those longer bullpen workouts, this is what it's all about. This is what you prepare for. Anna Shellnut, the batter for Florida State in the eighth. It bounces off the wall in center. Funky quickly after it, but Shellnut leading off with a double for Florida State. Well, this is one of the most barreled up balls we have seen. It's a little elevated in the zone, and Shellnut does not miss. Keeps those hands tight to the body, lets her barrel do the work. Hits the base of the fence for a stand-up double. <laughs> a lot of love as Shilnut heads back to the dugout. Pinch runner on in her place at second. Also have a new first baseman for Louisville, Siasio. Taking over at first. So there you see Siasio and the seniors started game one of the doubleheader today at first. And a new pitcher. So Roby had the complete game win in game two of this series for the Cardinals, but now Carol. Louisville opting to make a change, give the ball to their freshman, Gabby Holloway. Ah, just a change of pace. This is Florida State's fourth time seeing Taylor Roby. So Louisville opting to go with Gabby Holloway, give Florida State a little different look. And as you said, that ball by Shellnut, really the best sounding, best looking that we've seen today in terms of just a player being able to square up a ball against Roby. And we saw that on the Florida State side as well. It's Sander Cock rolling along, but as you get deeper into the game, more at bats, more information for the hitters. If you have a bullpen to turn to, it's the right time to do so. Just to give the, the opponent a different look, different change of pace, different tempo. Cassidy Davis, the batter. Picked up her first hit of the series in the fourth. Pinch runner is Dion Riggs at second base in place of Shellnut. Davis 
Nicely grabbed by Maddie Newman. Davis doesn't get a lot of this ball. She reaches for that outside pitch. And so far in this game, that's why we have zeros on the scoreboard. When it comes to runs, there's been some solid defense when needed for both teams. Seminoles have left nine on base in this game. Elizabeth Mason, seems like quite a long time ago that she had a home run in the first game today. It started at noon. She's without a hit in this game four, did walk in the sixth. Well, Greenwood's doing a nice job of being a wall back there. Has to move. Good reflexes, and good movement behind the plate from Greenwood. Very well aware of Riggs on second base and Florida State's always looking to move that runner around. Well, when you get to game four of, a, of an ACC series, it really does become about a lot of heart, a lot of grit, a lot of determination. There's, there's no secrets anymore. You know what everybody's going to do. And when you go extra innings in game four, it's, it's even up a notch from that. Just battling and finding a way. This pitch a little bit outside of the zone. Remember the barrel has to cross the front of the plate. That is a ball. As is that. Three to the count. This is the third appearance of this series for Gabby Holloway. Started game one, took the loss, came on relief in game three earlier today. Hard hit ball, will it find an opening? No, it gets in the glove of Greenwood. Excellent play in the outfield as Mason will have to head back to the dugout, second out of the inning. Well, Mason couldn't hit it any better here. This pitch is left over the plate from Holloway, but it's an even better catch by Carmen Greenwood, who's in full stride. Watch her reach at the last possible minute to give herself full extension on the play. Devin Flaherty, the batter for the Seminoles. And you could see also on that replay, Riggs hesitating, not quite sure if the ball was gonna drop. So she had no chance to advance, had to go back. She remains on second. Flaherty fouls it off. O2 pitch. Hit over to third, Ornelas takes her time, makes the play. So Florida State threatens with the leadoff double, but nothing doing after that. Let's see what the cards have to say in the bottom of the eighth. Extra innings in Louisville, four game series. You know you still wanted a little more softball. You're getting it here in this series finale between the seventh ranked Seminoles who sit atop the ACC and the Louisville Cardinals who are fighting to stay in good positioning in the ACC standings. Make sure they're in the top 10. They'd love to move up a little more than that regardless, but stay in that top 10 to make sure they'll be playing in this ACC tournament on their home field here in a couple of weeks.
on senior day. It is a senior, Celine Funky, to lead off the eighth for the Cardinals. Funky over two today. In this game, I should say, she did have a hit in the first game of the doubleheader today. Went one for two in that one, which was a loss in a run rule shortened game. That will sit her down, though. Strike out looking. Retires Funky. And Arnold really stretches the zone, throws this one out of the zone. But Funky was being extremely aggressive. Arnold recognized that and just threw one out of the zone and caught Funky swinging. Eighth strikeout for the Seminole pitchers today. Fourth for Arnold, who came on in the sixth. Bottom of the lineup. It is the nine spot, but a pinch hitter in is Taryn Weddle, who started game three behind the plate. She also appeared as a pinch hitter in the first two games of this series. No hits yet, although she did walk and score a run in the game two win for the Cardinals. She bats in place of Ornelas. Weddell, freshman from Georgetown, Indiana. High school All-American. Pops it up, and it's in the glove of Josie Muffley. Two down. And this is one of those games where offensively you've really got to manage your emotions. When you get to the eighth inning and it's still zero to zero on the scoreboard, you know your team's had opportunities, close calls, and it can be a very frustrating game. You've got to take one at bat at a time. Just try to make something happen for your team. But that, that's as the later this game goes, that's really the mental challenge of all of these hitters is to stay in the present, one at bat at a time, and not carry all those other at bats with you when you get in the box. Carmen Greenwood had a home run off of Kaylin Arnold earlier in this series, but showed she has many different skills. She had a bunt single in her last at bat in the sixth. Greenwood right at the top of the ACC in hits, second batting average. Well, Arnold's been relying a lot on her speed up in the zone and then comes back with this off-speed pitch, catches Greenwood leaning. Inside pitch, Greenwood hits it to Flaherty. And that will do it. Still no score. Still more to play from Louisville. Wait for someone to break through in this series finale. We are moving to the top of the ninth at Ulmer Stadium in Louisville, Kentucky. Seventh ranked Florida State. Still scoreless, as is the home team, the Louisville Cardinals. Cardinals hoping for a series split if they can find a way to get the win against Florida State today. Seminoles have won all of their previous ACC series this season. In fact, they've swept all of their previous ACC series. There are only two losses coming in pod play earlier in the year to Virginia Tech. Josie Muffley, the shortstop, leading off the inning for Florida State. She doubled in the fifth. Yeah. 
We've seen some explosive offensive displays from Florida State in particular in this series. A 10-0 win in game one. A 9-0 run rule shortened win in game two earlier today. But they have not been able to get much going in this series finale. It was Taylor Roby who pitched the majority of the game and has now made way for Gabby Holloway, the freshman. Well, and Florida State has had runners on base in seven of the eight innings we've played so far, but still no runs on the board for the Seminoles. Muffley, happy to take the free pass. Muffley oh. hitting in the eighth spot, and now Danny Morgan in the nine spot due up for Florida State. <laughs> Look at what Florida State has left out there today. As many base runners as they left in the first three games of the series. And that's where managing those frustrations comes into play. They know they've had opportunities. They know they've had a chance to get on the board. It hasn't happened. And if you hold on to that a little bit, it can affect your next at bat. And with the leadoff walk, it gives a little encouragement to Florida State. Danny Morgan singled in her last at bat. Can the bottom of the order come through for the Seminoles? Morgan over to Newman. So the runner advances. Muffley is on second and Morgan retired. Florida State continues to do what they've been doing all season long. Put runners in motion. See if they can advance somehow, some way by giving that runner at first a head start, whether that's a stolen base or just forcing the defense. And, and in that situation, it's a ground ball to the second baseman, but no shot to go to second because Muffley was in motion. Her only play was at first base. Lead off batter Kirsten Landers, top of the order for Florida State. She's one for four. She'd love to change Florida State's success in this game. When they have runners in scoring position, they're 0 for 10 so far. <laughs> Landers had just a monster game in the first game earlier today. Went two for three with four RBI. Hits this ball hard, but up and catchable for Ornelas. Out number two. So the All-American Sydney Sherrill now up at the plate for the Seminoles. She struggled today. A couple of strikeouts. She did reach on a walk and then flew out to left in her last at bat. I should, should say, Carol, she struggled at the plate. She's made some excellent plays defensively. <laughs> Well, there's no question. She has made her presence known in this game. Typically it is. Well, she also plays a solid third, third base day in and day out. Today we've seen some phenomenal plays from her at the hot corner, but typically it's her bat that does a lot of damage in each game for Florida State. And it's been quiet in this game so far. Cheryl coming into this game, hitting over 300, leads the team or did coming in and runs, hits. That one may leave a mark. The 
ball always finds some area that's not protected. I'm convinced. <laughs> Good looking pitch by Holloway. What a strikeout for the freshman. Now setting up the Louisville offense. Holloway comes in, strikes out one of the best hitters in the league. Louisville has a chance to win it. Do the Louisville Cardinals have something to say in the bottom of the ninth? Good spot in the order for the Cards. Two, three, four on the way to bat as they try to take down seventh ranked Florida State in the final game of this series. Maddie Newman will lead off the inning for the Cardinals, a senior honored, seems like a long time ago now, well before game one of the doubleheader today. Newman at 5'5", one of those players always been told she was too small. Was born premature at three pounds, been trying to prove everybody wrong ever since. Gotten in a hole here though against Kaylin Arnold. Her support section ready to cheer. On a game like this, too, the depth of your bullpen can come into play. This is the second pitcher we've seen for Florida State in Arnold. And Florida State has used several pitchers all season long, but the majority have been Sandercock, Arnold, Danielle Watson, who we've yet to see today. So. Arnold hadn't, didn't throw any pitches in the first game, and so she came in the sixth inning, and she's still pretty fresh since she doesn't have that many innings under her belt. Does have a strikeout or two or four, five, make it. <laughs> so try to add them all up. Continues to work that upper part of the strike zone. It's a low rise ball. Breaks right over the plate. Newman swings right underneath it. Is this the best shot here for Louisville? <laughs> Florida State going to be very careful with Taylor Roby. Not give her a chance to put a bat on the ball. Well, and, and if you're Florida State and you get in a game like this, you're playing the percentages. Taylor Roby leads the team in home runs. One of the top hitters in the conference. They know she can win the game with one swing. And on deck is Madison Siasio, who is yet to have a hit this season. So they are just going with the odds, as anyone would in this situation. A lot of respect for Taylor Roby as a hitter. And even though this one obviously will go down in the intentional category, that's the first walk issued by the Florida State pitching staff in either game today. And in this situation, Roby's been run for already in this game. So that's another piece of information Florida State has. They know Roby has to run for herself. No option there unless they want to take Roby out of the game, which is not, not really an option for Louisville. They, they want to make sure she stays in the game. As you said, Madison Siasio, senior out of New Orleans, now at the plate. Search of her first hit has not had all that many opportunities on the year. 0 for 22 coming into this game. And this her first at bat of this game as she came on defensively for Hurst at first base. Yeah. 
1-1 pitch is popped up. Both players there. It drops in the dirt. Roby is out, though, at second. So Florida State still able to make something of it, get the lead runner out. But Arnold and Shellnut both collide trying to make this catch. Uh, both communicating for it. You, you rarely want your catcher to come forward to catch the ball. But what a heads-up play by Anna Shellnut. Bounces off her pitcher. They get knocked to the ground. Doesn't take her time to talk about it. Hustles, picks up the ball barehanded, throws a strike to second base. Just your routine, Jen. Two to six, fielder's choice out. <laughs> yeah, just your routine, two six, okay. So, Siasio officially reaches on a fielder's choice. Charlie Butler who has a couple of sacrifice bunts in the game. That won't get it done with two outs. I mean, those are things that last play is just tough to teach. Just that game sense that Shellnut had the wherewithal to not give up on the play, still try to make something positive happen for her team. There's a Bates. lot of players that would have fallen down and been discombobulated and everybody's safe, but not with Shellnut behind the plate. That's such a great point and such a good veteran, great veteran back there for the Seminoles, part of their NCAA championship team 2018. Ooh, that may have come back and hit our home plate umpire, Scott Mayer in his face mask. Mm, did. Just. Boy, that's where that's. you really hope the shop absorption is good in those face masks. He looks okay and ready to go. That's a good sign. O2 to Butler. Hit hard. Well, crowd liked what they saw with that swing, but Butler unable to keep it fair. Well, Louisville continues to stay aggressive, not taking many pitches right now. And for an 0-2 pitch, this one's very close over the plate. Butler gets a good look at it. Butler, right back at Arnold, tougher to make the play, but she does. The Florida State defense getting it done. We're gonna keep going. One of the most heads up plays you'll see this season, Anna Shellnut getting the out at second base. We're going to the 10th. Well, our first game of the doubleheader might have ended early, run rule fashion after five. Not the case in this one. We're ready for the top of the 10th. Still waiting to see if anybody can break through in this series finale between Florida State and Louisville. Seminoles are ready to go in the top of the 10th. Kaylee Harding, the freshman right fielder, the leadoff batter. Harding into the grass in right, but Newman coming over to make the catch. Well, Holloway's done a nice job since she's come in this game. Just one base runner via the walk. 
Shelna, who had that great play behind the plate after she and Kaitlyn Arnold collided, was smart enough to pick the ball up, make the play in the top half of the inning, is quickly retired here at the plate. Cassidy Davis, the designated player for the Seminoles. One hit on the day. Davis gets a hit through to right field. So a little two out action for the Seminoles. Well, after struggling in the first three games of this series, Cassidy Davis has found her swing, two hits in this game as Florida State extends this inning. Elizabeth Mason, the batter, takes the first pitch for a strike. 0 for 3 in this game. Was 1 for 3, and that won a home run in the game earlier today. Mason hits it over to third. Ornelas fires it to first inning over Louisville. Still in it to win it. They'll have a chance coming up in the bottom of the 10th. Catching you up on where things stand as we go to the bottom of the 10th in Louisville. No score. Florida State has left 12 on base, but for the most part, it's been the pitchers doing the job for both teams. Yeah, it has. It's been a combined effort. It seems like whenever the team has threatened, the pitching staff has really elevated their level of play. We've seen some really good defensive plays as well. And right now, finding that timely hit with a runner in scoring position, it's tough to do. Kaylin Arnold seeming to have a bit of an issue with her hand, may have another pitching change for the Seminoles. She's been great since coming on. Maybe just needs a little treatment over in the dugout. Well, as all pitchers could tell you, they get real creative. Sometimes when you pull on those seams, you can get a crack in your finger, and it they are tough to heal, especially during the season. I mean, you know, of course, you're thinking uh, Band-Aids or tape, but, I mean, I've seen super glue. I have seen it all <laughs> just to try to keep, the, keep those fingers together during season, especially with Arnold throwing a lot of rise balls, a lot of, uh, a lot of cutting on her, on her fingers, and looks like they're going to try and doctor her up and keep her in the game. Lonnie Alameda over there checking on the progress. And Arnold, we'll see, does have something on there over that finger on her right hand. She came on in the sixth inning. Has five oh, strikeouts. And Carol, we talked about at the beginning of this series, which seems like about five years ago, that there was a lot at stake for both of these teams. Florida State trying to stay on top of the ACC standings, get that regular season championship. And for Louisville, look how tight it is. I mean, three teams, Syracuse, Louisville, Pitt, all with 11 wins right now. It is winning percentage that will ultimately determine their seeding and their final standings in the regular season have to be in the top 10 to make the ACC tournament. I mean, you say it all the time, every game matters, but as you get closer to the postseason, they feel like they matter more and they do because just one win, one loss can shift you in various seeds heading into the ACC tournament. Gabby Holloway will bat here. She only had to throw seven pitches in the top half of the inning. Very efficient top half of the 10th. 
but is now behind 0-2. O2 fouled off. Well, this has been a long day of softball. Florida State was supposed to be out of here and headed for the airport. But they've since extended their time. They were supposed to be done by five. May or may not happen, depending on what happens here with the Cardinals. Give themselves a little extra time to try to see this one through. Big game, as we've just talked about. One, two for Holloway. Strikeout. Finger seems to be taped up just fine for Arnold. Uh, this pitch is out of the zone, but Holloway can't hold back. Once again, a nice play from Shellnut. A little short hop in there. She makes it look easy for the out. Cassidy Greenwood now. Right back to Arnold. Two down. We've seen the Seminoles get the bottom part of their order going, especially in the game before this one. Their seven through nine hitters had six hits, scored five runs, and you get the feeling Louisville's going to have to get that kind of production at some point, too, from the bottom of their order. Celine Funky in the eight spot. And hey, look, we don't need five runs. Right now, they just need one. Well, uh, you definitely, when you get to an extra inning game situation, always an advantage to be the home team. If you score, game's over in this situation. And if the opposing team scores, you at least know what you have to do. Do they score one, two, whatever it might be. But if you get into an extra inning situation, it's always an advantage to be the home team. Funky, a little rattled after fouling off that ball. One, two, staying alive. And when Arnold's been ahead on Funky, she's been able to work that outside part of the plate. Get Funky reaching for the ball. We'll see if she goes back to that. Really stretches the zone. And she does indeed do that, but it's way too far out. Not good enough to, to swing for Funky as she battles. 2-2 two, two count. Funky reaches out, gets her bat on the ball. We'll try to beat it to first, but is not going to make it there. Ten. Still not enough to decide a winner. Eleventh inning on the way from Louisville. Scoreless in the second? No, no, that's not the story here today. That's just the scoreboard having to start over because we are in the eleventh inning. Scoreless between Florida State and Louisville. You have to get a little creative sometimes when you have a game stretching this long and stretching this long scoreless, even more of an anomaly. Surely at some point that's due to change. 
Devin Flaherty, the leadoff hitter for Florida State, seventh ranked team in the country. Just three ACC losses in total on the season for the Seminoles, who sit atop the ACC standings. Out throughout the course of the season, you don't get to be in the top 10 if you don't know how to win different kinds of games. What sometimes it's a slugfest, it can be a nine to eight game, other times it can be what you have today a 0 0 game going into the top of the 11th. And Florida State's going to have to find a way if they want to stay at the top of the standings, stay in that top 10, find a way to earn the victory here today and equally as impressive has been Louisville. They already have one game and one win in this series and looking to hang in there and find a way to win another one. I mean, it's one of those games you get to this point and you almost want to say, all right, you each get a tie. I know we don't do that. We don't hand out ties. We'll have a winner and a loser. But I mean, they both have just been even, obviously, as the scoreboard shows. Now, Florida State, I will say, certainly has had more base runners. 12 left on base for the Seminoles, which exceeds the number that they left stranded in the first three games of the series. Full count to Flaherty. Long run and too long in the end for Carmen Greenwood. Try to make a play. Flaherty, another foul pop-up, not catchable. This bottom part of the order has been so productive for Florida State, especially in the first game today. Also done well in the second game. In the eighth pitch of the at-bat, Devin Flaherty gives the Seminoles another base runner. And it's an important one because it's the leadoff batter of the inning. Does not try to pull this ball. Goes the opposite way. Doing what Florida State does. Hitting the ball where it's pitched. A lot of singles. A lot of extra bases. We'll see if they put Flaherty in motion early in this at bat. 14 stolen bases in 14 attempts on the season for Flaherty. That Seminole chant, loud and proud from the dugout. Josie Muffley, the batter. She has doubled and walked in this game. Inside, Flaherty is on the move. The throw gets away from the Cardinals. Flaherty over at third, and Ornelas had to make sure she got a glove on that ball. Flaherty, so close. Florida State leads the league in stolen bases, and Servi is a late getting to the bag. That allows the throw to get away, and Florida State to get an extra bag, no hesitation from Flaherty and a nice play for Arnellis to prevent the ball from further miscues. Muffley is retired. One down now with Flaherty at third. Day Morgan in the nine spot for Florida State. <laughs> you can see what they might be thinking. Uh, no surprise there from Florida State. 
And the corners for Louisville are playing halfway up the line. They anticipate it as well. They also know Florida State loves to run on contact, so any angle down ball or ball in the dirt, they're going to run. So the Louisville infield says, okay, I'm going to play. Look at Maddie Newman, two steps in front of the baseline. You're going to have to hit it past us to try and score that run. Look at the first and third baseman halfway up the line, defending the squeeze, middle infielders playing. In. So where does Morgan put it? Into the glove of Celine Funky, the tag, and the runner out at home. Oh, what a play by the Louisville defense. Seminoles thought they had snatched the lead. Celine Funky and the Cardinals say otherwise. A big play by Funky, a sliding grab. Gets up and fires a strike to Greenwood. Look at the tag. Louisville has a chance to walk it off. Biggest play of the game so far, Cassidy Greenwood, who did not start this game at catcher, but she got inserted behind the plate, makes the tag as Flaherty thought she'd given Florida State the lead. Now look how athletic this play is by both Funky and Greenwood, who not only has to go get the ball, but look how low her glove stays, stays around the plate. It's a very close play. What an effort by Greenwood to end the scoring threat of Florida State. As you said, it gave Louisville an opportunity to walk it off. Will this be the inning? We see the cards finally break through. This is Ornelas leading off the 11th, and she is the number nine batter for the Cardinals to top the order coming up. Well, you knew Florida State was gonna try and score on any ball hit to the outfield. And Flaherty tries to go around the tag and get her hand in there. But look at this tag by Greenwood just before she gets her hand on the plate. Very close play. Great yes. athletic effort by Greenwood. Now Cassidy's older sister, Carmen, up at the plate. And the 300th pitch of this game on the way. It has been a long one. Is there an end in sight? And you just kind of get that feeling, Carol. Carmen Greenwood is not kept quiet for long. Her only hit today, a bunt single in the sixth. Oh yeah, she came into this day as the leading the ACC in hits. She does it in a variety of ways. We saw her bunt her way on base earlier. Hit a leadoff home run in the bottom of the first, game two of this series. Two, two count now. In the dirt, make it full. We talked about game four of the ACC series being the toughest game just to manage your emotions. There's no surprises on either team. You've been battling each other game after game after game. How about an 11 inning so far and counting game four? Greenwood. Drops it into the outfield. Cards in business with one on, one out. Takes this pitch, it's up in the zone. Gets it a little bit on the handle. But the ball has eyes. And little sis, she's seen that a few times in her life. Excited to have her sister on base. Those two both talk a lot about how much it means to them to be able to play together. Carmen started her career at Auburn, but now joins her younger sister Cassidy as a part of this Louisville Cardinal team. 
Cassidy making the big play, the big tag to keep this game scoreless. Top half of the inning. Carmen coming through with a hit. And a base runner for Louisville. Lonnie Alameda out to the circle and ready to make a change. And she'll bring on a formal Cardinal just to up the ante in terms of drama a little bit here. Danielle Watson, the Louisville transfer, takes over for Kaylin Arnold. God, Florida State still has a fresh arm today coming out of the bullpen. Danielle Watson pitched in game two. We did not see her yet. We have not seen her yet today. Really works up and down in the zone. Throws the ball hard. Really not as much as an off-speed pitch, but really relies on her power and her speed and her location to get out. And we talked to Lonnie Alameda about how it might be for Danielle Watson in this series. First time facing her old team, going back to the stadium where she used to play. I mean, it's hard to keep the emotion completely out of it when you're in that type of situation. And as you mentioned, Carol, we did see Danielle in game one and game two come on in relief. What a situation she enters here in game four. Well, there's no question. It's, it doesn't get any tighter than this. Extra innings. Louisville with the home team. She's been on this pitcher's plate many times, but not in the current uniform she's in. Maddie Newman, first offering, fouled off. Well, just under three hours ago, Newman had a hit in the first inning of this game, been quiet since. Well, when we saw Watson in game two, you know, she started off very strong in the circle and then had two walks, back-to-back -back walks that really led to Louisville scoring a few more runs late in that game. So important for her to stay ahead as she has, get ahead, stay ahead as she has against Newman. Big strikeout to start things off for Watson. Got her looking. Just paints the corner here. Pure power coming at you. What an 0-2 pitch. Great location here from Watson to retire Newman. Sandra Cock and the Seminoles like it. And once again, Four State not messing around. They walked. Taylor Roby intentionally in the ninth. They'll do so again here in the 11th. Well, sometimes you might think, wow, you're really going to walk the, the winning run into scoring position. Well, with Taylor Roby at bat, the answer is yes. And most importantly, it's yes because when you look in the circle, with a long game like this, a lot of substitutions going on. Madison Siasio in the circle. Still looking for her first hit this season. In the ninth inning, there was just one out when Roby was intentionally walked. That did bring up Siasio. She was able to get on to first through a fielder's choice. We'll see what result awaits this time around. As you said, Siasio, a senior, search of her first hit of the season. The crowd, they're not quieting down. They're pretty amped up after a long day of softball at the ballpark. Well, and what a moment for Siasio here. Senior day, as you mentioned, opportunity for her not only to get her first hit this season, but to possibly give Louisville a win in this game.
Can she at least pass the bat? Keep this inning alive for Louisville. One one from Watson is high. Big moment for Siasio, a swing and a miss, evens the count. Watson relying on her power, just pure velocity through the zone right now. Siasio having a hard time catching up with it. Two, two. Watson comes in to the ballpark she used to call home, gets a couple of strikeouts, and keeps this game going. Watson painting the corners, two strikeouts, looking a big moment for Watson. Let's play 12. Well, in case you were wondering if you've stuck around with us all this time, you're now keeping an eye on the game that is tied for the longest in conference play this season as we head to the top of the 12th from Ulmer Stadium in Louisville, Kentucky. And Carol, as we were talking during the break, we get a little extra bonus point because this one is the second game of a doubleheader today. All these teams have been on the field a long time today. It's this at this point, it's a battle of mental wills. And you can and see the coaches <laughs> visiting. Well, we've been told there is a drop dead time. It originally was supposed to be five o'clock that Florida State had to get out of here. They got to go catch a flight back to Tallahassee. They then extended that to 5.30, but now as we're sitting here getting ready to potentially start this 12th inning, I imagine that's exactly what the coaches and our umpires are talking about. So, Carol, if, if we stop, it's a tie? Yes, it reverts back to the last full inning played, which, which would be a tie, and I'm sure the umpires are having that conversation now. It's always agreed upon before the game starts. So whatever they agreed upon before the game started, whether it's a true drop dead or whether you complete the full inning after their quote drop dead time. And obviously that's the conversation happening right now as they come to an agreement of what needs to happen. Just throw that little wrench in the plans when you're figuring out winning percentage and looking at conference standings. Gonna have to look a little more like a soccer standing when you add that tie column for these two teams. If if that's what happens but i mean obviously they're taking quite a bit of time here even having this discussion as we are creeping ever closer to that 5 30 eastern time drop dead time for the seminoles are you ever part of a game where you had something like this happen sure sure and it's it's always about flights uh usually you know you, you can't miss a flight it's just uh the rules of of how it goes and so <laughs> it's 5.22 p.m. You know, and you don't want to start an inning you can't finish for, for obvious reasons. But if they do, and there's a true drop dead, it would revert back to the last full inning played if they didn't complete the full inning. And just remember, everyone, that scoreboard, it doesn't go all the way to 12. So they just had to go back. But it's still zeros, no score. Between our two teams, it has been tight. This is tight as you can be in the final game of a series. And I think that's what the umpire crew is telling everyone. This is not gonna satisfy anyone, but this game is going to end in a 0-0 tie. Wow. It feels a little bit like soccer, which I have never understood. I know, Jen, that's uh, you're, you're more the expert in that sport than I am. But uh, it's just a funny feeling, um, you know, but but with the flights, um, that is something that 
the ACC did decide, you know, there's there's no changing that. You can't change a flight, and Florida State's still going to have to hustle to make their flight. But after watching these teams battle, and it truly was a battle for 11 innings, it is going to end in a tie. Have to think this is one of those feelings for everyone involved. Completely unsatisfactory, but you have to stick by the rules you determined before the game, both teams agreed to this, and there were some critical plays defensively that kept us scoreless. Yeah, and one of the biggest plays happened late in the game just a few minutes ago with a runner, one out, runner at third base, Funky with the diving catch, throws a strike to Greenwood who makes a very athletic play at the plate to get Flaherty. Great effort by Greenwood for the double play. Inches, seconds perhaps, the difference between that run scoring and not. Officially it is called a halted game. <laughs> halted after three hours in the second game of a doubleheader in the fourth game of a four game series. What a battle it has been in Louisville. Well, wish we could uh, have a winner for you. I know both teams wish that as well, but instead it is a 0-0 halted game to finish up this series in Louisville. For Carol Bruggeman, I'm Jen Hildreth saying so long from Louisville, Kentucky.